the Earth formed and what set it apart from other planets in the solar system has been an ongoing research question that scientists are looking to find answers for. Understanding the composition of planets and circumstances under which it was formed are essential to learning more about how life formed on Earth, which would further aid the hunt for other planets that may have the potential to host life. In a new study, researchers from Germany and US have learned that Earth and Mars were formed from material that largely originated in the inner solar system. In this episode, I talk about how researchers compared the isotopic composition of Earth, Mars and pristine building material from the inner and outer solar system and what it revealed. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. Approximately 4.6 billion years ago, in the early days of the solar system, a disk of dust and gases orbited the young sun. Two theories describe how the course of millions of years, the inner rocky planets formed from this original building material. According to one theory, the dust in the inner solar system started clumping together to form larger chunks, gradually reaching approximately the size of our moon. Collisions of these bodies finally produce the inner planets Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. A newer theory, however, suggests a different growth process. It suggests that millimetre-sized dust pebbles migrated from the outer solar system towards the Sun. On their way, they began to consolidate and form the planetary embryos of the inner solar system and step by step expanded to their present size. Both the theories are based on theoretical models and computer simulations aimed at reconstructing the conditions and dynamics in the early solar system. Both describe a possible path of planet formation. But which one is right? To answer this question, researchers including those from the University of Munster in Germany and the California Institute of Technology in the US determined the exact composition of the rocky planets Earth and Mars. For this, the isotopes of the rare metals titanium, zirconium and molybdenum found in minute traces in the outer silicate rich layers of both planets provide crucial clues. Isotopes are two or more types of atoms that have the same atomic number, that is number of protons in their nuclei and the position in the periodic table and hence belong to the same chemical element and that differ in nuclear numbers, that is mass numbers, due to the different numbers of neutrons in their nuclei. While all isotopes of a given element are almost same in chemical properties, they have different atomic masses and different physical properties. So for example, hydrogen has three isotopes. While the hydrogen atom has one proton and no neutron, deuterium, its isotope, has a neutron, while tritium, another isotope of hydrogen, has three neutrons. Scientists assume that in the early solar system, these and other metal isotopes were not evenly distributed. Rather, their abundance depended on the distance from the sun. They therefore hold valuable information about where in the early solar system a certain body's building blocks originated. Researchers used two types of meteorites as a reference for the original isotopic inventory of the outer and the inner solar system. These were chunks of rocks that found their way to Earth from the asteroid belt, a region between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. They are considered to be largely pristine material from the beginnings of the solar system. Meteorites known as carbonaceous chondrites, which can contain up to a few percent carbon, originated beyond Jupiter's orbit and only later relocated to the asteroid belt due to the influence of growing gas giants. Carbonaceous chondrites include some of the most primitive known meteorites and are considered an important class of meteorites to study because they were not exposed to higher temperatures so that they are hardly changed by thermal processes. Their more carbon depleted cousins, the non-carbonaceous chondrites, are the true children of inner solar system as the researchers describe them. The precise isotopic composition of the Earth's outer rocky layers and that of both types of meteoroids have been studied for some time. However, there have been no comprehensive analysis of Martian rocks. 
In this new study, the researchers now examined samples from a total of 17 Martian meteorites, which can be assigned to six typical types of Martian rocks. In addition, the scientists for the first time investigated the abundances of three different metal isotopes. The samples of Martian meteoroids were first powdered and then chemically treated. Using a mass spectrometer, the researchers were then able to detect tiny amounts of titanium, zirconium and molybdenum isotopes. They then performed computer simulations to calculate the ratio in which building material found today in carbonaceous and non-carbonaceous chondrites must have been incorporated into Earth and Mars in order to reproduce their measured compositions. They considered two different phases of accumulation to account for the different history of the titanium and zirconium isotopes as well as that of the molybdenum isotopes. Unlike titanium and zirconium, molybdenum accumulates mainly in the metallic planetary core. The tiny amounts still found today in the silicate-rich outer layers can therefore only have been added during the very last phase of the planet's growth. The study found that the outer rock layers of Earth and Mars have little in common with the carbonaceous chondrites of the outer solar system. They account for only about 4% of both planets' original building blocks. If early Earth and Mars had mainly accumulated dust grains from the outer solar system, this value should be almost 10 times higher, according to the team. But the composition of Earth and Mars does not exactly match the material of the non-carbonaceous chondrites either. The computer simulations suggest that another different kind of building material must have also been in play. The isotopic composition of this third type of building material as inferred by our computer simulations implies it must have originated in the innermost region of the solar system. Since bodies from such close proximity to the sun were almost never scattered into the asteroid belt, this material was almost completely absorbed into the inner planets and thus does not occur in meteorites. The researchers said that we no longer have access to this lost building material today. The find does not change the consequences of the study for theory of planet formation. The fact that Earth and Mars apparently contained mainly material from the inner solar system fits well with the planet formation from the collisions of larger bodies in the inner solar system. This is Mona Basu, special correspondent at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box.